Let's show you this final shot of this thriller. Michigan with the ball. Jawan Howard going for the win as time expired. Mike Smith there with that final shot, unable to get it to go. The clock hits zero. Ohio State advances to the Big Ten championship game for the first time since 2013. It is March. Look at the excitement from those Buckeyes. An incredible finish to the buzzer. But there you have it. Ohio State topping Michigan 68-67. We are joined now by our experts, co-hosts of the Eye on College Basketball podcast, Matt Norlander, and our college basketball writer, Chip Patterson. Guys, we knew based off of the first game, this was going to be a good one. Not the exact same kind of game we got in that first one, but Matt, you said you're fired up watching these games. What was your impression of this first Big Ten semifinal? Yeah, let's bask in this afternoon as we roll into the evening. College basketball conference tournament Saturday is a great day. So how about Ohio State? Chris Holtman, let's give this guy some credit. He definitely made some really good adjustments. Also happens to have Dwayne Washington on his roster, who can be a bit of a streaky player. We saw it in the first half and then second half, 7 of 11 from the field, helps Ohio State get the cushion that it needed because Michigan, which got a really good performance out of Hunter Dickinson, its best player. Remember, no Isaiah Livers in this one. You tell me Isaiah Livers plays in this game, I'm telling you Michigan wins. Credit to Ohio State again. Didn't have Kyle Young, was able to overcome it. Had some really good shooting, some good streaks in the second half. Man, that that ending there, I kind of felt like the shot was going to fall. It's, we've kind of had that mojo this week, Chip. But credit to OSU. Michigan's going to stay on the one line here. This is, you know, in talking to Chris Holtman in recent weeks, I, I, I just get the feeling that this kind of win, no matter what happens on Sunday in the title game, win or lose, win by 10, lose by 15, lose a close one, no matter what happens with Ohio State, you know, Holtman was telling me we just need a couple of wins against tournament teams to remind us of what we are capable of. And they got that kind of win here. Good on Ohio State, which at a certain point, for everyone checking in on college basketball right now, you know, six weeks ago, Ohio State, for a good month period in the bracket forecast, was a surefire one seed at that point in the season. And then it took on a bunch of losses to end the regular season. It ekes out a win here, and in doing so, it's going to be able to enter the NCAA tournament with, I think, the confidence this group needs. Credit to the Buckeyes. Excited to see them play the winner of Iowa, Illinois on Sunday. Yeah, I've got uh, probably my strongest feelings right here in the immediate aftermath of the game about Michigan because the Wolverines, when you, you've got uh, Livers already on the sideline, obviously out indefinitely, then Franz Wagner fouls out of the game. I mean, that's somebody who's probably uh, one of your best facilitators, one of your best defenders, and he had uh, one of the few really good looks for a Michigan offense that just went – went stale there for a long period of the second half. I mean, the Ohio State lead was by as many as 13 with less than five minutes to go. Wagner fouls out, and I'm looking at the game, and the body language isn't good, and I'm just thinking, man, you know, Michigan's out of this. This is a wrap. Let's get ready for post game on CBS Sports HQ. So for the Wolverines to charge back into this, an 11-1 run over the final three minutes. You're getting defensive stops, and you're creating buckets. We saw Dickinson put the team on his back, be a real force on the end inside and then the Shondi Brown three-pointer from a player who had not had a good game to that point to hang in there and be able to give Michigan a shot there at the end uh, I think that Michigan even in a loss comes out of this a with an example of what they look like without Isaiah Livers in the lineup what they need to work on and B knowing that they were able to climb back into the game without two of their best players thanks to contributions from other people on the roster of course Dickinson one of the best players on the team uh, him as well so so for Ohio State, I think you're glad that you're able to hang on. And I think that you are very encouraged by the way that Dwayne Washington played in the second half and the way that the Buckeyes were able to just get good looks. I don't think Michigan defended the three-pointer very well in this game. But again, to be able to survive and be able to get a shot at the Big Ten Conference Tournament Final, what a great reversal of fortunes for a team that finished the regular season on a losing streak. Chip, since you had such strong feelings about Michigan and the way this one ended, I want to start with you and get your thoughts. On the broadcast, Jim Nance, he called it that Michigan going for the win. Do you agree and like that decision that they were going for it as opposed to just trying to get that easy bucket, tie it, and force overtime? 
Without a doubt, because I think that Jawan Howard is looking at that moment as an opportunity to see what his players do, to see how they react, uh, to see how it goes. Because you know what might happen? There might be an NCAA tournament finish where they don't have a timeout, where they don't have the luxury of being able to draw up a play. And Michigan has its sights set on something bigger. And I think that he had the Final Four and the National Championship and the NCAA tournament in mind where you just say, all right. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to let our guards decide this. We're going to see if they can go and make something happen. If they have to settle for a three, we'll see if it goes. I don't think it was a terrible look. I mean, we can uh, nitpick over who got the ball and the opportunity, but the way that uh, things sort of broke down, it was in the guards' hands and, and Smith was not able to bury the shot. So I like the call by Jawan Howard because I think it shows some confidence. It is not overcoaching, and then I think it is taking the bigger picture uh, into consideration when thinking about how your team's and react in crunch time. Yeah, fascinating final sequence. Let's go through that one more time because I can guarantee you Holtman and his coaching staff are going to look back on this and how they won it. And they did get like the image, but watch this. Look at Hunter Dickinson, leading scorer. Look at Justice Suing, 14 there. They want to get him a look. He is their leading scorer. They, you know, they realize they don't have the look there, have to settle for the three. They, they wanted Dickinson on this play. I promise you they wanted Dickinson to have the ball. And Ohio State, which is not an elite team, not an elite team, not a really good team on defense. It's a pedestrian defensive team. On the whole, it has one of its three or four best performances on that side of the floor today. Justice Suing is this team's glue guy. For him to get in Dickinson's way there and not allow either the, the, the pick and roll to happen or, or, the, or the pick and drag for Dickinson to get the ball, I just I couldn't help but notice that there. It's why I was a little surprised that the shot wound up going up like that and that Dickinson getting the ball. But credit to Justice Suing and Ohio State for making a play there. Uh, big time stuff. And again, the kind of stuff that's going to give OSU some real mojo heading into the tournament. I'm still like... My opinion hasn't changed because of one result. I still don't think Ohio State really is that likely of a Final Four contender because of its deficiencies on defense, its overall size. But I do think that it is capable, if it's hot, of beating just about anyone that it would face in the first three rounds. So uh, certainly good games for the Buckeyes and trying to win their first league championship in eight years on Sunday. Ohio State, they have had trouble closing out games. Some of the stats, it was a 13-point game with four minutes left, but then it was a one-point game with only 47 seconds. So as we look ahead to tomorrow, the final on CBS and March Madness, Matt, how, do the, how does the Buckeyes use this experience being able to close this one out as they look ahead, as they try to march and uh, cut down those nets? Well, here's the deal. So we had the, uh, the, the, the thing with EJ Liddell's finger. Hopefully everything's fine there. Liddell is their best player, but Ohio State has a really good uh, number two in Dwayne Washington. On a given night, either one, but I, I think if you asked that staff and said, you know, you know you're know, you playing a pickup game, who's the guy that's going to be first? It's EJ Liddell. But Dwayne Washington is going to be the key. I mean, if we are looking up in two weeks and we're talking about an Ohio State team that just made the Sweet 16 because it won a game at the buzzer, I'm going to tell you, Dwayne Washington is the overwhelmingly likely pick to have been the guy to make that kind of shot. He was a different player in the second half and finished with 24 points after a two of nine in the first half. Liddell finished with 18. They're going to need more. And again, Kyle Young, who's not an offensive, like, overwhelming threat. He is just a, a very important presence for them. He is out in concussion protocol. We'll await to see if he's even available for Sunday. But I still trust Ohio State's ceiling offensively overall. I... I Defensively, I think they still have issues. But in this game, we have Ohio State, I'm checking it right now. Points per possession, 1.11, solid. Actually, Michigan was 1.10, according to the Ken Palm box score. So that's that's highly efficient. Both teams were not nearly as good in the, in the first half. I, I like their potential to make the second weekend. I just happen to think this group is kind of going to be dependent on the second round matchup it gets. Like, I can't see myself picking against Ohio State no matter the opponent in the first round. That's either going to be a 15 seed or a 14 seed. But that next team, be it a 7 seed or be it a 6 seed, we'll have to wait and see. They've got good potential, but they are gettable. I think that you're excited by the way that you closed out in the final minutes. I think that that is a reversal of the trend that we saw. Lost at five point loss to Michigan. It felt like they just let the game get away, a game they could have won. Same against Michigan State, a game that they could have won. They just let it get away. Uh, lost to Illinois, five point loss. It felt like they didn't close well. And they almost gave it away to Purdue. 
then they dominate in overtime and they make sure that they don't give it away. They almost gave it away to Michigan, but they find a way to pull it out. Maybe this team as a, as a closer and as a group figuring out how to close out these tough games against tournament teams, maybe that's the big building block for Chris Holtman and the staff. And it was a good one we had there. Now let's show you this updated bracket now that we have one of the semifinals in the books. Ohio State moving on. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.